welcome back my dear students uh, today's class we are going to see another numerical on design of a two way slab so you can see the question here design a slab of clear span 5.2 meter by 7.5 meter resting over a brick wall of thickness 300 mm the slab is continuous over three edges and simply supported over one longer edge use is code method the live load over the slab is 6 kN per meter square a floor finish of 120 mm thick waterproofing is given is applied having a unit weight of 18 kN per meter cube over the slab use m30 concrete and fe 14 grade steel so here the slab is continuous over three edges and is discontinuous or simply supported over over one of the edge also the live load is given as Uh, 6 kN per meter square and there is a waterproofing provided at the top of the slab having thickness 12 uh, 12 cm and unit weight 18 kN per meter cube you are using m30 concrete and fe 14 grade steel so you can see here it is given like this it's uh, continuous over here continuous over here continuous over here and this is discontinuous over this portion so taking ly by lx ratio i will get it as 1.44 which is less than 2 and it is supported on all the four edges so this is a two way slab assuming an l by d ratio of 30 you will get the value for d as 175 mm that is assuming 20 mm nominal cover based on the exposure condition and 10 mm diameter bars i'll get the total depth as 200 mm the next is the calculation of the load the self weight of the slab you will get it as 0.2 by 25 that is 200 mm thick by 25 kN per meter cube for the density of concrete you will get it as 5 kN per meter square Floor finish as 0.12. That is 12, 120 mm is the thickness for one meter by one meter. If you are taking the unit weight of the material used is 18 kN per meter cube. I will get it as 2.16 kN per meter square. And live load is 6 kN per meter square. It is given. So the total load I will get it as 13.16 kN per meter square. And the factor load I will get it as 1.5. Into uh, three one point five that is for the factor safety for dead load and live load. I'll get it as one point five into thirteen point one six that is nineteen point seven four kilonewton per meter square. Now the effective span in the x direction that is the center to center distance O that is the center to center distance O the clear span plus D whichever is lesser I'll get it as along the x direction five point three seven five and along the y direction I'll get it as seven point six seven five meter. So the, for the moment calculation, I require the ly by lx ratio that is 7.675 divided by 5.375. I'll get it as 1.427 that is 1.43. Now you can see here that is this is discontinuous, this is continuous, this is continuous, then this is continuous. So three side continuous and one longer side discontinuous. That is. Panel number three, that is three side continuous and one longer side discontinuous. You can see the panel number three, that is here. You can see in table number twenty six. In order to calculate the value for alpha x and alpha y, you have one longer edge discontinuous. You can see here that is one longer edge is discontinuous, and the other three edges are continuous. Other three edges are continuous. So that is panel number three. And I told you since this is Having support over here, support over here. This is continuous over here. There will be negative moments as well as there will be positive moments. That is, since at the mid span you will have the negative moment, a positive moment. That is, the tension will be at the bottom, and at the edges you have the negative moment. That is, the tension will be at the top. So, if we take here, you can see the alpha x. That is for both negative. And positive. That is, the negative moment will be coming at the support. The negative moment will be coming at the support, and the positive moment at the mid span. So we have the alpha x positive and alpha x negative for both x direction and y direction. So I'll get it. Alpha x negative for 1.43. It lies between 1.4 and 1.5. So it is between uh, alpha x negative is between 0.063 uh, and 0.067. By linear interpolation, I'll get the value for alpha x negative as 0.065. That is, you will get the value for m x negative as alpha x into w. That is your design load into l x square. You will get that value as 37.06 kilonewton meter. That is, if I am writing here the m x negative corresponds to alpha x negative, you will get the value for 
that is 0 0.065 that is 37.06 now similarly i could find it for alpha uh, x positive alpha y ne negative and alpha y positive i can find that and i'll get that value as mx negative or positive alpha x positive i'll do the linear replication i'll get this value similarly alpha y negative i'll do the linear replication i'll get this value and alpha y positive i'll get this value from the table correspondingly i will get the value for the moment as 27 21 and 15.96 kilo newton meter that is now i need to check the d minimum now we have got the moment so the d minimum has to be checked for the maximum moment that is if it is safe for this moment it will be definitely safe for this smaller moment so always the d minimum has to be checked for the maximum moment that is i'll check the d minimum with respect to mu x negative that is i'll get it as 94.61 which is less than d provided what d provided was 175 mm which means it is fine so this is an under reinforced section and it is safe so the calculation of ast negative corresponding to mu x negative i'll get the value for ast negative as taking d is equal to 175 and L value for mu s 37.06 in raised to 6 i'll get ast negative s 617.07 millimeter square that is ast minimum calculation we are getting ast minimum as 0.12 percent bd will get as 240 mm square which means it is fine now providing 10 mm bars the spacing required is 127.27 mm square so considering the maximum spacing criteria it is 3d or 300 mm i'll get it as this is the design uh, spacing is required so provide 10 mm at 125 mm center to center at the top along the x direction here please see providing 10 mm at 125 mm center to center at the top this is we are providing at the top because this is mx negative we are corresponding this 37.06 is mx negative that is your AST X negative. AST X negative means the tension is coming at the top. We need to provide the reinforcement at the top. That is, we are providing 10 mm at 125 mm center to center at the top in the X direction. That is, that is, we will we will find the value. That is, we got provide 10 mm at 125 mm center to center at the top in the X direction. Similarly, we could find the value for the moments and the AST in the other direction. When you are taking the D in the Y direction, which had to uh, subtract it by a bar diameter. Now, similarly, I can I can write it for the other uh, moments also. That is alpha x positive, then alpha x negative, all those. You will get Mx positive corresponding to that you will get the area of steel as 10 mm at 170 mm center to center. Now you need to find it for My negative. So alpha Y negative there you do not you don't require interpolation because it's only one value. You get it as 0 0.037 and corresponding moment as 21.16 kN meter. And here the D will be reduced by 10 mm and AST required is 366.65 providing 10 mm bars the space and required is 214.2 mm that is you are providing 10 mm at 210 mm center to center here everywhere you need to check for the minimum reinforcement but our minimum reinforcement was 240 mm so it's fine here here it's not less than 240 in any of the cases similarly we will find the value for my positive that is alpha y positive you will get it as this is also you don't you don't require linear manipulation because it's a single value 0 0.028 
from the you will get the value for m moment is 15.96 that is and the d value you need to subtract it by 10 mm that is 165 mm from there you will get the value for ast y positive s2 74 mm square providing 10 mm bars the space and required is 286.32 provide 10 mm at 210 mm center to center as the bars that is once all these values are obtained you have you have the sufficient amount of reinforcement or uh, required for taking the moments that is uh, for the x direction positive and negative negative and positive y direction negative and positive this will be placed at the x direction at the supports and this will be placed in along the x direction at the mid span this will be placed at the y direction at the supports and this will be placed at the y direction at the mid span so now check for torsion that is we need to provide the torsion at the top and bottom so we will be providing see here this is actually this is continuous over here continuous over here continuous over here and discontinuous over here so you can see you can see here in your code is code d1.8 the torsion reinforcement shall be provided at any corner where the slab is simply supported on both the edges meeting at the corner at both the edges meeting at the corner it shall consist of top and bottom reinforcement each layers of bars placed parallel to the sides of the slabs and extending from the edges a minimum distance of one fifth of the shorter span the area of the reinforcement in each of these four layers shall be three quarters of the area required for the maximum mid span moment in this slab that is this is what when we are when we are talking on when the four sides were sides were discontinuous now here you can see you can see here the three sides are continuous and only one side is discontinuous so if i am taking this corner this corner the two corner edges are discontinuous continuous this corner also the two sides are continuous but this corner one side is continuous and the other side is discontinuous so if you carefully read these two clauses d1.9 and d1.10 torsional reinforcement equal to half that described in d1.8 shall be provided at a corner contained by edges over only one of which the slab is continuous that is since here one edge is only continuous we need to provide the reinforcement or the torsional reinforcement required as that required for half that required for when the two sides are discontinuous so we need to provide here we require according to this we require 3 by 4 of astx since one side is only continuous we need to provide only half of that that is 3 by 8 of astx is required and the second one that is d1.10 the torsional reinforcement need not be provided at any corner contained by edges over both of which the slab is continuous that is you have here both the sides the slabs are continuous both the edges the slabs are continuous so we don't need to provide the torsional reinforcement when the edges contains uh, continuous edges when the slab uh, the spans continuous in both the direction we don't provide reinforcement torsional reinforcement so i can summarize it like this at this corner one and two it is continuous over this span and discontinuous over here so we need to provide half that required for when both sides are discontinuous that is 3 by 8 of ASTX positive is provided over here and 3 by 8 of ASTX positive is provided over here and here we will not at corners 3 and 4 we will not provide the torsional reinforcement that is I can say the size of the mesh is LX by 5 and the area of steel required is 3 by 8 of ASTX positive please make sure this is ASTX positive that is the mid span moment area required for the mid span moment the area required for the mid span moment is ASTX positive so I will get it as 171.81 mm square now the number of bars provided are 10 mm bars we will provide it so 171 divided by pi by 4 into 10 square we will get it as 3 bars that is we will be placing 3 bars in this direction and 3 bars in this direction at the top and bottom of the slab in order to take the tension uh, torsion in order to take the torsion that is in order to prevent it from lifting and one more thing is that we will be dividing this section into middle strip and edge strip which you can do it by yourself so I hope you are clear up to here we need to divide it this into edge strip and middle strip and the minimum reinforcement will be provided at the mid 
edge strip and max uh, design reinforcement will be provided at the middle strip now you need to check for shear deflection and development length that is you need to do, do the design calculation for check for shear deflection and development length and the detailing has to be done so this comes to an end of the slab design it is one way slab and two way slab so i hope you are clear up to here now the remaining portion is the similar to the slab design that is a staircase and the next one after that staircase is designed for limit state of collapse compression that is the design of column okay so i hope you are clear up to here we'll have a live session for the detailing of the slab which we have studied this question so i hope you are okay up to here take care thank you and have a nice day